Howdy folks, you're listening to Smarticus Tells History, the podcast where we discuss some of the wacky and crazy stories your friends may have told you. So sit down, have a beer or two, and let's learn a thing or two. Well, howdy ho folks, welcome back to the show, Smarticus Tells History. I'm your host, Smarticus. As always, I'm just thrilled that you've returned for yet another episode. As you can probably guess from the title of the show, today's story is about Captain Morgan. That's right folks, Captain Morgan was in fact a very real man. What did he do that earned him the right to have his name and face branded on the famous Spiced Rum? Well, it's quite a story, so buckle in. His full name was Sir Henry Morgan. In 1635, in a town called Landrimney, which, after a quick Google search, appears to be what is now known as South Wales of England, was a place of his birth by a very wealthy farming family. Unfortunately, from the research that I conducted, there was not a lot of information on his childhood. It is heavily rumored that he was kidnapped, which at the time was also known as Barbados, which I personally would vote the use of that word back into meaning. Now, it appears that he was either sent there to work, to be a servant, or as a slave in Barbados. According to the history books, this may or may not have been the case. But it was written by a man of the name Alexandre X. Cumelin, who happened to be Morgan's surgeon in Panama and joined him on his journeys. Now, Alexandre wrote a book called The Unparalleled Exploits of Sir Henry Morgan, Our Jamaican Hero. Now, there is no real evidence that actually even proves if Morgan really was a Morgan at all. So, in Alexandre's writings, it says that Morgan's father was a well-to-do farmer, but there is no evidence to prove that he really was his father, and that it was just assumed he was biologically related to the Morgans who resided at what is now known as the Tredegar Mansion. In fact, there is no convincing evidence, period. And because of this, even the UK Trust acknowledges this possibility. Now, Morgan could simply have married a woman whose father was related to the Morgan family, thus still calling him father. Anyways, apparently when Morgan had caught wind of Alexandre's writings, he sued him. This action led to Alexandre having to retract his statement of how Morgan had actually ended up in the Indies. However, these writings are also the reason why Sir Henry Morgan is so famous in the first place and the reason it is my go-to liquor today. But as I mentioned earlier, there is not much information about Morgan's childhood. So our story really begins in the year 1654 when Henry joined Oliver Cromwell's troops under a man named General Venables that was based in Portsmouth, which was part of the Caribbean expedition against the Spanish out in the West Indies. The following year, in 1655, Morgan befriended a man named Christopher Mings, whom, at the time, was a rather famous captain. Now, this friendship was the first step in building Morgan's career as a reputable sailor. Captain Mings had agreed to take Morgan under his wing and show him the ropes of what it was to be a sailor and gain the experience he would need to survive. Morgan would learn as much as he could, as fast as he could, to gain as much naval experience as possible. His lessons and training paid off in 1662, where he became the captain of a small seabaring vessel. After commanding this vessel for five years, he befriended yet another important figure, Sir Thomas Modiford, who at the time was the governor of Jamaica. In 1667, Sir Thomas Modiford awarded Morgan with what is known as a letter of marquee. This letter now licensed him as a privateer, which is basically a legal pirate, and it would allow Morgan to attack and pillage any Spanish vessels that he could find and seize their cargo. Now, this, of course, was only after the Kingdom of England and Spain's diplomatic relations had, in fact, deteriorated. Because of this, Morgan quickly gained popularity as he began attacking and taking over Porto Princip and Portobello. No, not the mushroom. It is recorded that in 1668, when he took these towns, that he defeated over 3,000 Spanish soldiers and later returned with somewhere in the realm of 68,000 and 105,000 of the British pound currency, as well as with a variety of other valuables. A few years later, in 1671, Morgan attacked the Spanish-American city capital of Old Panama City. According to records, he defeated another four to 500 Spanish men and only lost about 15 men himself. However, there was no gold or silver to be looted in Panama City, as the Spanish had finally caught wind of Morgan's reputation and relocated it somewhere else. Now, unbeknownst to Morgan, there was also a treaty that had just been signed between the Spanish and England. Unfortunately... This did in fact mean that Morgan had attacked when it was technically declared a time of peace. 
So, of course, to keep the Spanish happy, the governor of Jamaica did in fact receive an order to arrest Morgan. Now, it is important to note that the governor had no actual intention to arrest one of the most famous men on his island, who happened to also be one of his good friends. So, both Morgan and Thomas Modiford, the governor, were instead summoned to London in 1672. Upon arriving to London, Morgan was treated as a hero by the locals and in fact the government officials up to and including King Charles II, who had ordered Morgan's and Modiford's arrest. Instead of convicting Morgan, the king chose to knight him instead, officially making him Sir Henry Morgan. Two years later, in 1674, Morgan returned to Jamaica as lieutenant governor. However, after all his escapades, he never again made it back to England. Instead, he simply enjoyed drinking his rum with his fellow privateers and working his sugar plantations, which was widely popular back then. Unfortunately, by the time 1688 rolled around, Captain Sir Henry Morgan passed away. The actual cause of his death is unknown, but it is believed that it was either tuberculosis or acute alcoholism. Regardless of the cause of death, it is noted that he died very wealthy, very happy, and very famous. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very short story of the real-life Captain Morgan. I wish I could give you some more information, but that's all I can find. However, later on, I might touch on this subject again, as I have a new book coming in that very well might shed some light on some more information. Now, for those of you that are interested, there was a 17th century ship that was discovered in Panama back in 2011. It is believed that it belonged to Captain Henry Morgan as it contained a portion of what they believed to be the name of Satisfaction on the hull of the starboard side of the ship. According to records, Morgan had five ships that were lost in 1671 near the Lajas Reef, including his own flagship, the Satisfaction. Inside that ship was many unopened cargo boxes and chests encrusted in coral. The expedition was funded by the rum company, Captain Morgan itself. The company joined the team and funded the program of the U.S. archaeologist from Texas State University after their own funding fell through. Now, they only joined the team after six iron cannons nearby were found, before they had actually discovered the ship, which sparked Captain Morgan's interest in the search. Now, all of the artifacts, including the cannons, remain the property of the Panamanian government, as well as any future artifacts that are to be discovered. The artifacts are preserved and on display at the Patronato Panama Viejo, which is what remains of the original Panama City. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and if you have heard any wacky and crazy stories that you want told here, you can go to our Facebook page at Smarticus Tales History and leave a comment. Now, with that being said, I'll see you next time, and you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and awesome day. Bye now.